let me say how honored I feel to have been invited to open this great event today in what is Godfrey's and my new country, the Black Isle. Now, you will all associate me with the end product of the reason for us all being here today, with lamb or mutton on the plate. My father farmed sheep high in the fells in Cumbria, and he was president of the Rough Fell Sheep Breeders Association. But back to where I'm really better known, with the delicious meat, which is lamb and mutton. Many years ago, I was invited to do a cooking demonstration for the Blackface Sheep Breeders Association at Ingolstadt during their AGM. I sat down and started to think of recipes, and I very soon realized that I could have demonstrated for 22 hours, never mind two hours, using lamb recipes alone. Lamb, you see, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, but lamb is the most versatile of all the red meats. Today, today is the result of a great deal of hard work, all voluntary, by a group of men and women who are extremely busy in their everyday lives anyway. With people who are so selfless in the time they donate to occasions like this one. Right, we're standing here at uh, Digwell Mart on a, on a beautiful morning for NSA Highland Sheep and with me is uh, Kerry Mackenzie, the Managing Director of uh, Dingwall and Highland Marts, who are the hosts for this event today. Um, Kerry, how important do you think this event is for the sheep industry in the Highlands and Islands? Well, I think it's <clears throat> I think it's a very important thing. Actually, I think it's it's been it's a first class thing that we've actually we had the opportunity to do this, and uh, having this wonderful facility that we have here, we feel that uh, when we got the chance, we were uh, you know asked to do it. We thought this would be you know be a, an ideal place because there's Scott sheep is often further south, and it's not so handy for people from North Islands, Western Isles, etc., to get there. So this is a chance to to bring uh, a sort of mini Scott sheep up. To the to the Highlands, so and I think we've got the facility here for it. As an auction company, you're very close to the sheep industry throughout the Highlands and Islands. You conduct sales in the West as well as here at Dingwall. Yeah. How do you view or how do you see the state of the sheep industry in the Highlands and Islands at the present time? Uh, well, it, it's it's concerning, I must say. I I, I do worry about the state. Of the, 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 there's there's not enough. Uh, what you say? There's not enough younger men. I feel getting opportunities to get into the to sheep farming, and I would like to see a bit more of that, if, if at all possible, uh, within the, with the new cap reform. I think I would like to see a bit more encouragement than that. Um, but it does concern me the way the sheep industry is going. I see too many sheep coming off the hills. I would like to see, you know, the, when I remember when I started in this job, I mean, you drive along and all the hillsides were, were full of sheep. And now it's, it's more and more environmental trees and etc. So I think um, I would like to see a bit more of on that side of things. Right, I'm now talking to uh, Sybil McPherson, who is the new chairwoman of uh, the NSA in Scotland. Uh, Sybil, this is the first time the Scottish region has uh, arranged an, uh, an event like Highland Sheep in, in the Highlands and Islands. How important do you think it is for sheep farmers in the Highlands and Islands to have an event like this? I think it's critically important, Eddie, that we have an event up here in the Highlands and Islands, obviously an area which is very important to Scottish agriculture, and in particular uh, sheep production. So yes, we welcome the opportunity to have it here at Dingwall Marts. How concerned are you about the decline in the national sheep flock, particularly in the Highlands and Islands, and indeed with land abandonment, which I know you're familiar with around about your own farm in Argyle? Well, I'm extremely concerned with the, the decline in the national sheep flock and the, the impact on the whole fragile rural infrastructure right up the north and the west coast, uh, particularly Argyll, Loch Aber and, and up to the north of Scotland. Very worrying because the whole rural infrastructure is really underpinned by sheep production in these remote glens. But what do you think can be done about it? How do you think we can reverse the, the decline in the sheep flock? 
I think that that's actually an extremely difficult position to, to return from. Um, hill sheep are, are naturally hefted and when these sheep are removed from the hills it's extremely difficult to reintroduce them. It takes a lot of hard work and a lot of skilled labour and sadly we've lost the skills. The shepherds from the high hills are, are, have gone now and, it's, and we're in grave danger of becoming a rather extinct species. And what do you hope today's event will achieve? What message would you like sheep farmers to be going home with? Well, having come through one of the most difficult seasons uh, imaginable, I think the message that we hope will be delivered by Cabinet Secretary and by Scottish Government and of course by, by Europe as the new CAP uh, reform rolls out, we need to make sure that it's uh, financially possible for these people who passionately wish to continue farming in this, these types of areas but for whom it's become increasingly difficult due to legislation, poor returns, environment, all these issues. It's, very, it's a very difficult one. People will go away, farmers will go away with uh, good information and technical information and marketing and so forth. But it's also an important social occasion, isn't it, for sheep farmers? It is very, I think. Um, yes, all these things that you have mentioned are available here with the latest um, genetical improvements, rules and regulations, feeding, all these types of things. But the social aspect of it, hill sheep farmers that are fairly remote, quite often one man show can quite often become fairly isolated and it's vitally important that they can come along to an event like this or their local agricultural show or whatever and share their experiences, learn from each other and just have a, you know, have a good old crack about it. So McPherson, thank you very much indeed. I'm now talking to George Milne, the Development Officer for the National Sheep Association in, in Scotland and of course a sheep farmer in his own, own right. George, this is the first time you've arranged an event uh, in the Highlands and Islands for sheep farmers. How important do you think this event is for farmers in the area from the islands and from the highlands and further north? Uh, well, first of all, we're really pleased to be here and have this event today. And uh, it's, it's great for the farmers up here to get some, somewhere that they can go and have a, a day away basically from the farm but they can also find out all the uh, knowledge that's going on up to date things within the sheep industry we have uh, in the region of 80 odd trade stands and we have uh, all the breed societies here so it's a great day out for them Sheep farmers have come through a pretty difficult winter bad weather during the lambing and so forth how do you assess the state of the sheep industry at the present time? Well once again, I would say the sheep industry is in a fragile state in Scotland and uh, it, it's really not just the recent weather of January, February, March, April, it's on the back of last year which was extremely wet. So we've had to come through a wet, whole wet year and then we've had a very cold late spring on the back of that and there'll, there'll be a lot of losses of sheep across the country and you know it's in a fragile state but the only thing is that the prices are remaining fairly good at the moment. New season lambs come onto the market and it's usually making about £120 a lamb at the moment. So if that continues throughout the season, then that will maybe help morale. Do you think we should be spending more or the industry should be spending more to promote lamb to the consumer? Well, I've always preached this, uh, as you know, Eddie, that... that for the value of our whole industry to the sheep industry to rural Scotland the, the the value that that brings back into rural Scotland is so big that we need to spend a higher percentage on marketing uh, lamb now where we can source that money from we have to investigate that further but we if it, it's like a brand like Coca-Cola. They didn't establish a worldwide brand without investing a lot of money in marketing. Now, Scotch lamb is so unique in flavour and, and so that this image of naturally reared, naturally produced, we've got the hills, we've got the heather, everything's there. So all we need to do is really just find some more source of finance to actually encourage in marketing. Finally, George, what sort of message would you like to see sheep farmers going home with after today's event? Well, I'd like to see them going home with a positive message. And, you know, the one thing that they'll, they'll enjoy the event, they'll maybe find out things that they can go home and uh, put into practice at home. But I think the best thing in the day is the sun here. George Milne, thank you very much indeed.
Okay, I'm now with uh, Phil Stocker, the Chief Executive of the National Sheep Association. Uh, nice to see you uh, all the way up from Malvern to the Highlands. How important do you think this event is for sheep producers in the Highlands and Islands? Oh, I think it's massively important. I think it's really important for the NSA to, to reach out and make sure it's making contact with people in the most extreme regions of the country. And, you know, it's quite clear that, uh, you know, people in the, in, the, in the Highlands and the Islands and the north of Scotland, you know, deserve the NSA to come out and, uh, yeah, be in contact with them. It's a real pleasure to be here, I have to say that. And what do you see as the purpose of an event like this? I think it's to bring people together, uh, to allow uh, information to be shared amongst people and from uh, you know, researchers or trade stands back out to the farming community. I think uh, as, a te as a, an event to, to share technical knowledge and marketing knowledge is really important, to bring policy makers and politicians in so that they can see what's going on in these rural communities is important. But I, th I don't think we can forget the importance of the social networking as well, just to bring people together to, to meet and chew the fat a little bit and talk about what's going on. and. Yeah brings the industry together. Yeah. There's a lot of concern in Scotland about the decline in, in the national sheep flock and indeed in land abandonment in, in the Highlands and Islands. Mm. Um, what's your take on that? Well, it's, again, it's concern this, uh, this shared across the country, I think. Um, you know, we, we, we have, over the last two or three years, started to see the ewe flock recover a little bit, with numbers starting to increase a little bit. But as we know, you know, the weather we've seen over this last 12 months, um, and, you know, further in the south, Schmallenberg, liver fluke up in this part of the country, and the heavy losses we've seen with the snow, you know, it, you, you have to say it's dented people's confidence a little bit. But from, the, from what we've seen so far, you know, it, it's not really taken people's enthusiasm away. It's just made them think harder about their systems and although we're seeing reduced stock numbers at the moment you know I think uh, it's, it's not signaling that uh, people are despondent about the industry again you know the prices are fairly good and there's a lot of optimism around but people are thinking about their sheep farming very very carefully. Um, I also think in terms of land abandonment we're turning a little bit of a corner in terms of um, getting messages across to the, the, the environmental movement the conservation movement and the wider public that actually the relationship between good biodiversity and nice landscapes and, and wildlife and sheep is critical actually and it, sheep and sheep farming and vibrant rural communities actually contribute a lot to, to keeping that countryside alive and keeping it how the public like to see it. Without going into too much detail, what would you like to see coming out of the CAP reforms at the present time to help the sheep industry? Uh, I mean, the, the UK Minister Owen Paterson seems to be dead against decoupling or headage payments, whereas the Scottish Government are keen to support that. What's the N NSA position on that? Well, the NSA position is that we need, we need to recognise the, the, the importance of, the, of CAP payments and the first pillar payments in, in particular. So we, we, we don't want to see any more modulation that we can get away with. We, we, we want to see a minimum amount of modulation to make sure because the it's quite clear that the single farm payment really underpins so many livestock farm businesses at the moment. So that's the first thing. I think the second second thing is that we'd like to see the uh, the second pillar, the rural development program, broaden out so that farmers can get uh, a financial reward for the very wide range of public benefits that they're delivering. And uh, you may have heard as well about a scheme that the NSA has been trying to, has been promoting uh, about uh, health and welfare, a, a scheme that would actually provide incentives for livestock farmers to do what we all know they need to do to raise the level of health, welfare and disease control within their flocks as well. So we've been busy over this last few months uh, putting proposals forward for a new uh, pillar two scheme uh, that would actually provide that incentive for, for uh, sheep health, welfare and disease control. Phil Stocker, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. We're now with uh, Chris Baxter, the sales director of uh, Harbro, who are the main sponsors of the event. Uh, Chris, as the main sponsors, uh, what do you think the event has achieved? Have you been happy with it as the main sponsor? Yes, I think we've been very happy with the event. It's been steady all day. Um, and I think it's been a great chance for, uh, for sheep farmers in the Highlands to, to uh, get here and get their, uh, their stresses out and uh, have a good discussion and some positive chat again and how we move forward. So, yeah, we've been very happy with our day. How important is the Highlands and Islands area for your business as a feed manufacturer? It's a very important area. Um, we've also got a plant at Inverness um, producing ruminant feeds and uh, 80,000 tonnes comes out of that plant for the Highlands and Islands and uh, it's uh, extremely important in the overall business uh, to be here today. Sheep farmers have been having a pretty tough time over the, over the past winter, and particularly this spring all, all over the country. Um, what have you as a company been doing 
to help them with the nutrition and the health aspects of their sheep flocks? Well, as you know, Eddie, we, we, uh, we're heavily involved now in research and development for uh, sheep nutrition and sheep health and uh, some of these things that we're looking at um, in abattoirs and uh, with uh, from fluke results and uh, rumen studies uh, are all to improve the customer profitability. So uh, it, it's very important to us and uh, it's at the core of Harbour, this, uh, the research and development. And it's all been done in the north and northeast of Scotland. So a big part of what's happening today is uh, is the, the chat on fluke and uh, I'm pleased to see that we are heading up all that debate. Uh, and you have a unique process, haven't you, in your mill at Tour Mill here in Inverness for the, I think what you call the Ruben Friendly concept for your feeds. That's right, Eddie. Yeah, we have a uh, Ruben Friendly concept, which is unique to Harbro. Uh, Ruben Friendly concept, again, is in the back of the research and development we've done on uh, Rubens coming through the abattoirs. Um, and we can see from a definite difference where we produce our feeds in the Ruben Friendly concept, which is with chip grains going into the pellets rather than... Uh, very finely ground raw materials going into pellets and it's made a huge difference and I think that's one of the things in terms of profitability for sheep farmers is, is, uh, is how the feed is used in the rumen and how it breaks up. Um, so yeah, very important to us. Chris Baxter, thank you very much indeed. We're now speaking to Rod McKenzie who is the chairman of the organising committee for NSA Highland Sheep. Uh, Rod, you must be very happy, it seems to be a very successful event today. Yes, I think Eddie, it's been, it's fulfilled our wildest dreams really. We've had a tremendous day of weather, we've had most cooperative people, a fantastic committee, great facilities, the sale worked better than we would have hoped, everything has gone superbly well I think, so yes we're very happy tonight. We'll come back to the sale. Uh, what did you hope the event would achieve for the, the sheep industry in the Highlands and Islands? Well, I think uh, what, we, what we were very conscious of is that we don't, the NSA doesn't have perhaps a very big profile in the Highlands and Islands. And part of that is it's difficult to arrange an event which will attract people from the south. And we, we need money to run NSA. So it was decided to have something that was more local and as I said already, like Topsy, it growed and yeah. it, it became not a money volume, much bigger than we had originally envisaged, but it was all, it was all successful. And the, the sale of uh, U-Hogs here at the end, was a, I think, was a tremendous climax to the thing. We had probably just about the right number. We had a very, very willing uh, audience who were prepared to dig in their pockets, but the, the sheep made a realistic price and it just sets the tone for hopefully our summer because folk have had a long hard slog and today is the first day I've seen people with their heads up and smiles. Do you think uh, farmers, sheep farmers in the Highlands and Islands really maybe have a better appreciation now of what the National Sheep Association, particularly the Scottish region, does for them? I think, I think they do. I think, you know, I mean, we've got a fantastic ambassador in Sybil McPherson who's uh, a sheep farmer in one of the most difficult areas in Scotland working in awful, awful weather conditions and Sybil has, has uh, embraced the challenge of championing the industry and she's doing it so well it's just fantastic so I think folk really relate to Sybil and where she comes from they see that the, 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 we've got one of our own working for us. Rod McKenzie thank you very much indeed.